So we know drugs are distributed in different tissues after we give them. How can we predict how can we predict the plasma concentration of a drug after giving a bolus, knowing that it will distribute to various tissues? So the initial plasma concentration of a drug, we can predict by the apparent volume of distribution of the drug. So volume of distribution is denoted as VD. And if we're wondering about the initial um, plasma concentration, we say VD initial. There are, very, there are a lot of different volumes of distribution of the drug, um, but first I'll talk to you about the volume of, of distribution of an initial bolus to uh, explain this concept. So the volume of distribution of a drug is equal to the drug dose that you give divided by the initial plasma concentration. That's the volume of distribution initial. And basically what what this uh, volume of distribution is telling you is what volume does it look like your drug has gone into? So you give a bolus of propofol. What total volume does it look like that has gone into based on what your um, your plasma concentration is and think like your plasma volume is about five liters So if every drug just Distributed itself only in the plasma and went nowhere else It would look like the volume of distribution for every drug is five liters, but that's not the case so I'll just tell you that um, in your average person the volume of distribution initial of propofol is about 20 liters so you give a bolus of propofol, it looks like um, that drug has gone into 20, uh, 20 liters. So I'll show you 200 milligrams. It appears from your plasma concentration as though it's been dumped into this, this bucket, which contains 20 liters of fluid. And so now this 200 milligrams is dissolved in there. 200 milligrams divided by 20 liters equals 10 micrograms would, would be your final plasma concentration. And that's not bad because above we had shown that your therapeutic range for uh, propofol was about 1.5 to 5 micrograms. So we've just overshot that a little bit by giving this person 200 milligrams. This concept of volume of distribution is a mathematical model which does not actually attempt to describe to you what this um, 20 liters is. So it doesn't try to tell you that this is the plasma and uh, maybe the lung and liver and heart volume. It doesn't do that. It just, it just tells you that it looks like this drug has gone into a compartment that is 20 liters. And this leads us into the concept of the compartment model. So what we've basically described now is our first compartment. So V1 is that first compartment that it looks like the drug goes into. So we give our bolus and it goes into this, not imaginary, but theoretical compartment that is 20 liters. But remember we said that after, after giving the bolus, we will also quickly see our plasma concentration decrease because the drug is distributing into other compartments. So at the top here, it is distributed into our first compartment, V1, and then it must be going somewhere else. So let's say here, it's distributing into our second compartment, so we'll call that V2. Now our drug is spilling over into this side, and then down here it's distributing somewhere else too, and the, you can see the curve is a little bit slower, or uh, less steep. So we'll define that as a separate different compartment that it's going into. So this was plasma, concentration, and down here is time, right? So here we see our plasma concentration is high because it is just distributed into the first compartment, and then we see our plasma concentration falling because our drug is distributing now into a different compartment, 
And again, this is a mathematical model and it does not attempt to describe to you what this compartment is, but maybe this is muscle, right? So maybe your drug is now distributing into the muscle here and maybe now with this more shallow part of the curve, it's starting to distribute itself nicely into the fat, which there is a lot of, but it's relatively vessel poor. So we'd see our initial high, or this compartment is full to the brim of um, of propofol, but then it will dis distribute itself into V2. So this will fall down a little bit. And this compartment will start to fill up. And V3, which fills even slower, will also start to fill up over time. So this is our theoretical compartment number one, which fills fast and almost immediately. And then V2 fills up at a medium speed. So our drug from our first compartment will distribute itself to V2 over time. And our third compartment, V3, is very slow to fill. But it might be much larger too. The size of these compartments, the size of V2 and V3, after just one bolus doesn't really matter because you'll never get close to filling these other compartments with just a single dose of propofol. But what happens now if you give repeated doses or we give someone a bolus followed by an infusion? You can imagine that we're keeping, we keep on adding drug to this compartment. This one will fill up and then this compartment will fill up too and eventually this compartment will fill up. So let's show you that as well. Let's say here we give our propofol bolus. And remember we have our therapeutic range which, which exists somewhere like this. And so instead of letting it fall be below our therapeutic range and letting the person regain consciousness, let's say we're running a total intravenous anesthetic and we don't want them to become conscious again. So we need to give a infusion of propofol to maintain them in this therapeutic range instead of letting the drug distribute itself to these different compartments. So we'll give an infusion here to maintain their plasma concentration of propofol. So going back here, we gave our initial bolus again, and then we keep adding to this compartment. And then maybe we'll take it down here just to clear this up. So our initial bolus will fill up this compartment. And then, yes, this will be distributing to here and to here. But as it does that, we're just adding more. So eventually V2 will fill up, it'll go higher. And V3 will fill up a little bit slower, but it too will um, eventually fill up. So V2 reaches its max and then we'll have our third compartment also filling up. This is that slow compartment, but eventually you'll saturate all these compartments. You'll saturate V1, V2, and V3. So now we have a case where um, the plasma is saturated, our, all our fatty tissue is saturated, the muscle group is saturated um, with this drug. So after we've run the propofol infusion for a long time, and we've fully saturated all these compartments out here, do you think that when we stop the infusion, we'll have this same sharp drop off of our plasma concentration? Um, the answer to that is no, because the reason this fell was because the, uh, the drug was distributing to other compartments. But now, since all those other compartments are full, the drug does not have anywhere to distribute itself, at least initially, until those compartments start emptying. So at this point, the fall of your plasma concentration will be much more gradual than it was originally. And so this is called context sensitive half time. The time that it takes for a drug to reach half its plasma concentration is dependent on the context and the context here being how long was infusion running for. And by extension, how saturated are your, um, are your compartments.
So again, this is the time for plasma concentration to reach 50% after stopping your infusion. We turn our infusion off and then we watch and wait how long it takes for our plasma concentration to reach 50% of what it was originally. So I'll show you on this graph um, the context sensitivity of uh, two different drugs, propofol and fentanyl, which is an interesting one. So this is context since half time. And let's say this is 500 minutes up here and this is 50 minutes down here. Um, and then our infusion, this is again, your context is the infusion duration. So let's make this 12 hours over here because it's not unreasonable to be running an infusion for 12 hours um, in ICU or a long uh, neuro case or something. So um, your, uh, your propofol time or context sensitive, sensitive half time will start low and it will raise as these compartments fill up and then it stays at around 50 minutes no matter how long you run the, the infusion. Now remember, just at the beginning here, so in the first 30 minutes or so, the um, time for the drug to reach half its plasma concentration is going to be smaller because you don't have these compartments saturated. Here, your compartments are saturated, so it takes much longer for the drug concentration to decrease in your plasma because this has more to do now with the drug being eliminated from your body. Take fentanyl for the other example here. Its context sensitive half time starts at a reasonable amount and then it increases substantially and plateaus at about 500 minutes. So this is not a good drug to be running as an infusion for you to have any kind of acceptable wake-up time after stopping your infusion. So it's good to be aware of the context-sensitive half-time of any drug that you're running as an infusion um, and how long it will take for that drug to leave your body after all of your compartments have been saturated. The context-sensitive uh, sensitive, half-time has to do uh, with the way that drugs redistribute after the compartments are saturated. So drug will be eliminated from this central compartment. So this will theoretically decrease and then it depends how fast this compartment will fill up again with the, uh, with the drug that's in the other compartments. So that is what contributes to your context sensitive half time is the redistribution of drugs from these um, peripheral compartments to your central compartment. When you get into it, the math of this three compartment model does get quite complicated, but I think it's important to understand at least this basic concept of the idea. Um, this is essentially how a TCI pump works or a target controlled infusion pump. It has a mathematical model of different compartments where the drug will go and it will be able to basically control or estimate your effect site concentration of the drug. You say estimate. It doesn't actually control it. It just uses its algorithms to predict what your effect site concentration will be. And it can, uh, it can tell you when you should stop your infusion for wake up based on um, the context sensitive half time of a drug and it knows how long you've been running it, therefore uh, when it should be stopped in order for the patient to wake up. I hope I have not caused confusion by mentioning that the context sensitive half time depends on both the drug um, elimination from your central compartment and um, the redistribution from other compartments. 
um, in reality, it does um, it, it is affected by both of these things, which is why I mentioned both. Um, the drug elimination from the central compartment is what makes room in this compartment for the drug to redistribute from the uh, peripheral compartments, and then the speed at which the drug redistributes to this central compartment will determine um, how fast this refills from the, the periphery. So uh, it is both the drug elimination and redistribution from other compartments that determines your contact sensitivity half time.